Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, my name is Apostle Peter Daniel. You are watching me in Heaven and Hell live program. The one we used to do every Monday to Friday. Every Monday to Friday. From 9 a.m. to 10 30 a.m. Every day. Every day. I pray the Lord God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus as we are going to reveal the secret of the devils and the mystery of God's word. The mystery of God's word. Uh, before we go into the word of God, I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, internal rock of ages, the life-giving God, the Almighty, we bless your name because you are Alpha and the Omega. You are Alpha and the Omega. We are Alpha, you are Alpha, you are Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Sir. We thank you for this moment with that glorified in Jesus' name. I pray for the people of God that are looking at me right now, that the power of God touch their heart. You will, you will visit their life and you will open their eyes to see the things of the Spirit and the mystery of the Word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I release right now. I release right now, I release right now the power of the God's word, the power of God's word, so that they can understand the mystery of heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, we are going to, I'm going to give you uh, a message that God wants me to give to you. This morning, I was asking God, what should I tell your people? What should I tell your people? You see, there are many messages God has already given to me to, to tell the world. But the issue is that I will always ask him which one he wants me to present to people. Because he's the one that knows the message that should be preached at a right time. So, and God told me, he gave me one of the uh, the topic, a message he has already given me before and told me to tell you. Because there are many messages that I have not even, I don't know how I'm going to say it. Because every day he keep on giving me different kind of messages. The one he has given to me, I have not even finished them. And he keep on giving me messages every day. And glory be to his name because he wants his children to make it to heaven. That is why all this thing is happening. And now uh, let me go to the point. Today, I want to tell you about a particular scene that has no mercy. There's a particular sin Christians are committing. And this sin does not have mercy at all. What I'm trying to tell you I, I know you might say that, ah, is there anything that blood of Jesus cannot wash? There is a particular thing that when you say blood of Jesus, even the blood of Jesus will run away. It will not come. So I want you to listen very well, attentively to this message. There is a particular thing that God loves all humanity and wants to see all people in his presence. But if you commit this particular sin, it will take away his eyes from you. He will not want to see you at all. There is a particular sin that when you commit it, even the host of heaven will turn their back at you. A particular sin. Which any Christian on earth must not try. If you have been trying it before, it's because you didn't know the repercussion. It's a general thing that Christians are doing, which can destroy it and squeeze their life. And in fact, and it can destroy their life completely with that remedy. Uh, somebody say, ah, to me it's fornication. No, fornication is too small to this kind of thing. If a man commits fornication, if he say, Lord, please forgive me, 
if he begin to shout for the blood, the blood will speak for him. But this particular sin, if he shout for the blood, the blood will not speak until necessary things is done. And somebody say, I know it. And the Bible says pride. It's not pride. You see, there is a particular sin that can make God to rewrite your story. If he has decided that he has a good plan for you before, he can rewrite it to another thing. There is a particular sin that can open the door of attach. Open the doors of attach that we attack peoples and destroy their lives. This sin is not worth a Christian to touch at all. Because whenever you touch it, the eyes of God is out at you. There is a sin. A sin as a Christian that you must not go, go near. Because if you go near it, if you go near it, it's a problem. This sin, there's no kind of anointing you can be carried on earth. There's no kind of there's no kind of relationship God might have with you. He will depart from you and your household forever if you didn't do the right thing. You might commit the sin of murder. I don't praise it's not, I don't say it's a good thing. And God can overlook it. But this sin, he will never overlook it. He write it in the scripture. He have said it. He said, this one, I will never forgive anyone who commit this one. This is a sin that when you go on your knee to pray, he will not listen to you. Call Cavalry. Call the blood of Jesus. Call Jesus' name. Call, shout. Cry blood. Do anything you can do. He won't forgive you until the writing is done. And what is the sin? The sin of unforgiveness. The sin of unforgiveness. The Lord told me this morning, he said, let these people know. Let my people know that I am against it. You might say unforgiveness. Why? Why is unforgiveness so carry a lot of ability like that? A kind of thing that God will say that he will not look, he will not do anything. He has said it before. If you read our father, he said, our father who has in heaven, hello be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this, our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as you have forgiven those who have debt, uh, those who are uh, those who sin against us. Forgive us our sin, as for forgiving those who sin against us. Now, forgive us our sin, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Listen to that statement very well. Forgive us our sin, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. It means if you didn't forgive the person's sin, he will not forgive your sin. <laughs> Let us go into the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. I will tell you the gravity of that sin. You might say, oh, it's a sin that we can avoid. It's a sin that is it's difficult to avoid. But you have to. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, starting from verse 12, he said, and forgive us our debt. This one used debt. The other version used sin. The other version used, another one used iniquity our debt as we forgive our debtor 
Now, he now said, and lead us to the temptation of God. Now, 14, let's go to 14. He said, For if you for ye, if ye forgive men their tr- trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their pre- trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Do you see that now? This kind of sin, when somebody sin against you and you hold a malice against the person, your name is already removed from the book of life. No wonder you pray and you say your prayer is not answered. How will it be answered? 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 It cannot be answered because the sin of unforgiveness is is crushing in you, is eating up your life. The sin of unforgiveness is a sin that God will never overlook. He will never take off his eyes. There's nothing you can shut on head if you didn't go and forgive that person. If you didn't show the person mercy, he will not show you mercy. If you didn't tell the person, I forgive you, he will not forgive you. That's why he said, if there is anybody that offended you, I be you offended. He said, whenever you come to my altar, no see anything. You want to give me gift, drop your gift first. Go and make the solution with that person. Because if you didn't do it, you will waste your time in my present. I won't look at your side. There's a man that God was talking about in the Bible. The man was talking about uh, there the, the, was a man Jesus Christ was talking about in the Bible. The Bible says there was a particular king or a particular man. He, let me say a king. And this young man, he owed the king 10,000 naira. Are you hearing me now? He owed the king 10,000 naira. And this man is unable to pay the king's his money. And the king decided, he, the king decided to go and arrest the man. He decided to go and arrest the man. When he now went to go and arrest the man, the man pleaded to the king and said, please, I beg you. I didn't have money to pay you. I'm suffering. My wife has not eaten about two, three, four days ago. We are borrowing a hand. King, my king, if I have this money, I will pay you. It's because I didn't have. Please have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my life. And the king, the Bible says, and the king behold the, the young man and he forgive him. And he said, don't pay again. Go. Your sin is forgiven. I want you to take note of that proverb. Just take note of it. The man, the king said, go, don't pay again. Go. Your debt is cleared. Go. And as he was going, he met somebody who owed him money too. But the person who owe him money only owe him about 100 naira. He said, hey, okay, come here, come here. Come here. Tell me now, you are, I borrowed 100 naira that day to buy the charge card. Where is my money? And the man also leaned down, just as the way he leaned down before the king and begged him and said, please, sir, I didn't have money. If, if I could tell you, my wife is in pregnancy now. We have not eaten about a month. Even the garden we are using, it is born, we are borrowing it. Please show us mercy. And the man grabbed his leg. He that way his leg. Come on! I send you. And he owed the money. And, and he owed the man by his, He bought him by the clothes. Give me my money. I care for you. Bring my money. And as he was shouting with anger with that man, Behold, one of the king's servants passed and saw him. Is it not 
the person God just uh, the king just uh, forgive ten thousand, and he's fighting about somebody who owe him money. And the man went and go and report to the king and says, "King sir, you cannot imagine the man you just forgive now is fighting over over money that somebody holding." The king said, "How much?" He said, "Hundred naira." Hundred naira. Hundred naira. Hundred naira. Go and arrest. Oh yeah, all the soldiers go now carry him to my palace now. Anybody of his family will see with him, carry him, bring him. And they carry the man to the palace. I want you to take note of what I'm telling you. It's just what we're reading. But you didn't know the gravity. That's why I said, it is not just good for a Christian to study the Bible, but study the Bible with the Holy Spirit. So that the Holy Spirit will teach you how and what it means. The scripture is more than how you read it. It's more far than how you read it. There are deep secrets there that you didn't know about God. And when he came, the king said, eh? Now, so he says, so sorry, sorry. He said, eh. he said, come, you that you owe, you owe me hundred naira, I and me, I forgive you. No, they pay hundred naira again, they go on your way. He said, you that you now owe me 10,000 naira. You are going to, I'm going to imprison you here until you pay all my penny. Until you pay all my pennies. Now, listen to me now. And the man was in prison. What Jesus Christ was saying in that area is this. If you did not, if you did not forgive anyone who have sinned against you, he too will not forgive you of your sin. If you did not forgive anyone who has sinned against you, he too will not forgive your sin. Let me explain it to you clearly so that you can understand what God is saying there. If you are a person, listen to me, probably when you are still very young, because as a man or as a woman, as a woman being, your sin will start counting from the day you know what your father's name is. Anybody can, that can identify his father or his mother is liable, is capable to stand before the judgment rule, according to Revelation chapter 20. It means judgment starts from the age of two to three years old in heaven. The same heaven that a human being is going to, the elderly one is going to stand, is the same one the young, small, small body is going to stand. In the book of Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, 12, 11, 12, verse 13, it was talking about this place I'm telling you, that the young one will stand there. Now, the, 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 the dog may stand at the age of that two, three years old. So any child of two, three years old who doesn't know Jesus Christ is capable of going to hell. God will not say he didn't know. Mm -hmm. To God, there's nothing like I didn't know there. If you do have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are thrown to hell. Also, to anyone. Now, listen to me now. Listen to me. Listen to me now. Now, let me explain to you. The sin you have been committing when you are two years old, Till you now be you now accept just Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Probably you are now the age 45 years old in age or 50 years old in age. And all that sin, you know, in that sin you might have committed abortion before. I, I'm not, you know, abortion before, or you have committed a thief before, you have seen before, you have shit before, you have killed before, you have lied before, you have fornicated before, you have committed adultery before. You have, all those kind of sin have been done before, but Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Now, that sins when you say, Father, forgive me all my sin. That sin, there is a book we call the books. I have to open it. In the book of Revelations, open Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. So that you can understand what. Well. If I'm saying it, you won't understand. From verses 11. 
12, verse 12, verse 12. He said, And I saw the dead, small and great. Small, you see small there? Small and great. Standing, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open. If you see that, you say that, and the books. For those who have gone to heaven, for example, I have died before. And I have died, I have stand before the judgment room before. So I know what I'm telling you. For those who have stand before the judgment throne before, we understand what I'm explaining to you. He said, and the books were open. And the books, you see books there, B double O K S were open. And another book was open. Another book, only one book, no S there yeah, was open. Which is the book of life. Now, when you stand before the judgment room, there's there's a, a there's a section, section of where sin are, and section of uh, uh, where the book of life is. The book of life is only one book, but the book of sin are many. Now, the moment you committed sins, the thing you have been committed sin when you are a child, when you are a child, when you are a baby, when you are a child, the sin you have been committed that time will be written in the book of sin. But the moment you say, Father, I am sorry of all my sin, he will forgive you of all your sin. All your sin will be wiped away. It means that book of sin, your names will not be there. Your sin will not be written there any longer. It will be wiped away. Now, if somebody now slap you, listen to me. I'm explaining to you. If somebody now slap you by your six, as he slap you by your six, you were not angry. Probably it's your, it's your friend. You didn't expect it. Or the person shit you. Or your husband shit, shit you. He went to another woman and go and sleep with another and you caught him away down there. Or your, your boss shit you. We're supposed to collect about 50,000. 50, they give you 10,000. Different kind of thing can come. You know? And because of that, what the person did to you, pain you from your heart that you were like, ah, I will not forgive this person. Even though the person has begged you or he has not begged you. Whenever you see him, you still keep on remembering it. You keep on remembering And it will pain you. It's like, ah, this person, ah, what you do to me, pain me. Now, as you remember the sin of that person and you didn't forgive the sin of that person, all the sin you have been committing when you are in that two years old, three years old, all of them till your age will not go back to the book of, of sin. All of them will appear. Why? That is what the place is talking about, if you don't understand. All your sin will appear. Why? It will not, it will, that your sin will not carry weight to the extent that God will not be able to behold it at all. It will not be behold, it will not, whenever you come, it will look like, go, 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 I don't want to see you. It will not be able to behold it. All the sin will come back afresh. You say, but I have forgiven God, I have forgiven me. Yes, because you remember the person's sin, all the sin of that person will come back. Now, there is no way you can call the blood of Jesus and wash it. God expected you to go and meet the person. If you cannot meet the person, call the person on phone and tell the person, I am sorry. Or talk to God and tell God that I have forgiven this person. And make sure that your heart are clean and clear. That whenever you remember it, you just be like, I have forgiven her. Now, number two. If you are a type of person that you are forgiving the person, but whenever you see the person, this thing still always comes to your heart. The pain will always come to your heart and you begin to look at the person with that eyes. Hmm. Well, I'm forgiving her, but hmm. Hmm. the thing pain is out. Hmm. Because you are remembering the sin of that person, God will also remember your sin. Number three, if you are a type of person that you are forgiving the person completely, you are forgiving the person completely. You are forgetting. Something now happened between you and that person. You now begin to remember all the sin the person has done to you. 
you begin to remember and begin to say that hey, to be doing that day. Hey, you know, I forgive you. Hey, you not do this one again. I do so you know that I'm putting it in somewhere. God will also remember all your sin. And they appear back in the book of sin. That is the meaning of unforgiveness. The meaning of unforgiveness. And unforgiveness doesn't have forgiveness from God. There's no way you can beg God that God will listen to you until you forgive. Don't you know what happened to Stephen? Stephen was stoned and he said, Father, forgive them. Don't charge them of this sin. Jesus was being key. He said, Father, as he was, he was being near, he said, Father, forgive them. But they don't know what they are doing. This is the kind of life God wants us all to live. Is it, is it possible? It's possible through Christ. He said, but the thing in my heart is a painful thing. It's painful in my heart. What it did, it pains me. Yes. But you have to forgive. If you do forgive, even as I'm talking to you now, you can, if corruption takes place, you are going nowhere. One. Two. It will resume the course of your family to dominate and begin to work in your life. Most of the problem Christians are facing now is due to unforgiveness. All the, all the, all the evil things that is happening to you. Some people say that I'm sleeping in the dream, I'm eating in the dream, and somebody is chasing me in the dream, I'm seeing problems. It's because you didn't forgive. It will resume the devil to come and torment your life. It will, it will bring them to come and torment your life. Not only that, your children too will share in it. That's how gravity it is. That thing that the Bible talks about, the sin of generation one, generation two, generation three, it will start occurring in your family because of the sin of unforgiveness. You as a Christian must completely forgive anyone who sinned against you. Don't wait that they have to come and ask forgiveness. Maybe the man came and asked forgiveness first. The Bible said, before you can uh, you can count a sin to somebody, the person must have offended you 17 times 7 in a day. And it is not possible for somebody to offend you 70 times 7 in a day. It's not possible. So God don't want you to count anybody's sin, even though the thing pains you. There's no sin in pain you, but the sin there is that you keep it in your heart. When the thing pains you, you say, ah, Father, it pains me, but I forgive this person. Many people have seen me when I'm going on my way. Many people have seen my life very well. Where bad people will offend me, and I will still be praying for them instantly. Now I will be praying for the person because I know I might forgive the person and God will still strike the person. It has happened very well. That person will just talk against me. And God will strike the person instantly. I've seen somebody who has tried to raise or touch me a little bit, and the person is being strike. I've seen somebody who has disrespected me, and God, the person is being strike. So what I do is that whenever they offend, immediately I begin to Father forgive them. No matter how gravity it is, I will never pray that God punish anybody. That if you are a type of person that always go on your knees and say, Father, ha, hey, sister, 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 sister. She's a Mukaila. See the way he talk against me in the morning. Father, show her that you are God. Beat her, oh Lord. Show her and punish her. Teach her a lesson. If you are a type of person like that, you cannot be kept. No, yeah. Never. In fact, you are not a child of God at all. No heaven for you. Forget it. You cannot make heaven. God wants you to forgive. Forgive expressly. And I pray he will give it the grace. Malice is part of you not forgiving. One of the signs that you have not forgiven the person is that whenever the person comes, you will not want to look at the person's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means you have not forgiven the person. Try your possible best to forgive. If you do that, it means your heart is still holding on to it. Go and ask God to remove it. Tell God I've forgiven this person. I release him from my heart. You have to go on your knee as a repentance and say to God, that, Father, I am so sorry. I release this particular. You begin to name them one by one. I release them in my heart. I have forgiven them for forever. For I have forgiven them. 
please forgive. I'm forgiving them. I release them because as when you do forgive somebody, you are putting the person into bondage. And you that you put somebody in bondage, you two are in the bondage. Say, I release them. And Father, touch everyone who is who is also angry against me. Touch them that they should forgive me too. So these are the prayers you need to pray to make heaven. And this is the kind of life you need to live to make heaven. And if you if you forgive somebody, some people say, I've forgiven you, but I can never in my life invite you to my house. <laughs> I've God see me, I've forgiven you, but you can never come to my house. No matter I can never talk to you again, but we can agree to good money, good money, but I can, you have not forgiven at all. You have to be normal. You will never, don't you know that the sin you sin against God is high? It, it, the sin you sin against God is so high that God's supposed to say, he's not going to take us that daughter again, but he still come back. He will still visit you in your dream. He will still talk to you in your Bible. He will still send somebody to you. Is because he forgive you from his heart. May the Lord forgive you and show you mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Don't just go without subscribing. Subscribe to the channel YouTube and uh, press notification button so that you can hear more of God's revelation and you can make it to heaven at last. God bless you and God be with you. Any question you have, come to the Zoom and uh, ask it. I pray you will make heaven in Jesus' name. God bless you. God be with you. I remain Apostle Peter. Bye-bye.